Welcome back to the channel and today I have a super quick but beginner friendly tutorial. We're going to be looking at how to set up the anisotropic effect in Blender. You might have seen a frying pan or the lid of an object that has been sanded and you kind of get the sort of like spoked effect here and that's just because there's thousands of little grooves in the metal as it's been sanded and it's catching the light in a very specific way making it look like that. It's called the anisotropic effect. Now the thing is in Blender on the principal shader I'm going to show you how we can do that and then I'll even show you quickly how we can kind of make a quick and dirty sort of chrome look by plugging in a noise texture where we can also control the saturation. So really quick beginner tutorial, let's jump in. So to demonstrate this with, all I have here is just a sphere that I've simply modeled like this. I've added in a few area lights and we are making this material in cycles. So in the render engine I've set it to cycles. What we want to do to create this material is you want to select the object that you want to add the metal material to. And with it selected, you want to go over to your material properties and click on it. And then go over here and click new. And let's just call this metal, enter. And now what we have here is just the sort of standard principled material. So if we now go into viewport here and we go Z and go rendered, you're going to see this is what we have. Now the cool thing is to make a metal material, and most people already know this, is you just come over here to the metallic value and you can drag it up. Now dragging it all the way up to one gives you a full metallic value. Now one of the things about metallic um, materials is to have some degree of reflectivity. So we can take this roughness and drag it down, but usually not all the way. Okay, Even going to something like 0 0.15, 17, 12, around there is um, a really good value. But dragging it all the way down to zero makes it a perfect mirror, which tends to look a little bit ridiculous. So we'll just sort of stick to something here in the lower end. Now this is cool, right? But one of the things we're looking here for is that anisotropic look. And here in the internet, you can see some examples of some anisotropic effects, especially this one over here. I think it's a really good example. Here, this has been sort of like sanded in this sort of way over and over with a sanding pad. So you're seeing sort of like these little isolated segments of anisotropic shading. And we might make it material like this at some point, but it's kind of an important thing if you're trying to get the audience to see a specific type of material. So how do we do this in Blender? It's really, really simple. We have your metal selected. You can simply come down under your material settings here, keep going down, and you're gonna to go to the specular. And over here under the specular, you're gonna see there's something here called the anisotropic. And if you drag that up, you're gonna to start to see the effect, right? But we're gonna drag it all the way up to one so we get the full effect. Now that's really cool, but not only that, we can actually change the angle of reflection, which is really important if you wanna be able to control that. So we're gonna go here to the anisotropic rotation, and now you can see you have the ability to rotate it as well. So that's essentially the sort of like grain direction that we're affecting. Now, one of the things here is well that I think is really cool. You also get this thing over here, which is the tint. So you can actually add a slight sort of tint to it. So they kind of make it like orangey. You kind of get like an orange tint to the anisotropic effect. You can kind of make it blue. Um, yeah, I kind of really like the like a slight blue. I think that just kind of makes it look a little bit almost like stainless steel. Um, if you wanted to add sort of like a chromatic effect, and one thing you might be able to do, I'll put this back to a white value. You just go back over into your shading workspace and this can really make it look like chrome is you can just go Z over here, go rendered on your object and then simply just go over here and go shift A and go search and type in noise and then get a noise texture and then just take the color and plug it into the base color. Now, that isn't necessarily a very accurate way to do it, but it does kind of give you that idea. And then you can go shift A, you can go search and get a U, and then get a U saturation and value, place it on here. And then you could just take that saturation down a few notches if you want. That kind of gives you a really cool chrome effect. I might just make the size here too, but you get the idea. It's really fun to make an anisotropic sort of chrome shader. Now you know how to do it, especially if you're a beginner, try it out on your next sort of project. If you're doing a kitchen scene and you have a pan, now you can make it. So I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.